things I will not be buying and paying for in 2024. Hello guys, this is a new month and it also happens to be the beginning of the 2025 financial year, right? Which started on the 1st of March, 2024 and will be ending on the 28th of Feb, 2025. That's if you are in South Africa and if you're like me and you're in the UK, our financial year will start and end on the 5th and the 6th of April. And the reason I'm mentioning this is so that you can start considering and planning if you are already an investor or if you are wanting to start your investment journey, how you're going to navigate or how you're going to sort of start, you know, um, saving and investing, especially taking advantage of the tax-free investment vehicles that are available in South Africa. This is what is known as the TFSA, the tax savings, the tax free savings account. And if you're in the UK, these are known as ISIS or junior ISIS, right? And whenever I speak about savings and investment, I know a lot of you guys absolutely love this topic and absolutely want to and desire to start the journey of investing and saving, right? But you're always feeling like, you know what, you actually do not have, you know, the means or you don't at the end of the month, you actually do not have enough to, 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 to even, you know, consider saving and investing. And on this video, I'm just going to show you a few things that I have done that have just somewhat shifted the needle for me when it comes to, you know, saving a little bit and being able to, you know, redirect those savings, right, to an investment pot or to a savings pot, right? Again, these are not groundbreaking things. These are just simple things. So as I go through my list, I want you to start thinking through your own life and thinking through the things that you can consider cutting on guys and remember once we've cut remember this is not a mindless activity once you've cut those items right remember we're going to redirect those funds into saving or investing or even better guys if you are high high in debt you i would rather have you actually redirect all of those savings to your snowball plan or to your debt uh, freedom. My name is Tendo Jo and I am your financial coach. And if you are new here, a very warm welcome to Money Sense with Miss T. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate that you continue to come back. And guys, I just wanted to pause here before we continue with this video and say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your continued support. The community is growing. The last time I checked, we were sitting at around 840 subbies. Thank you so much. And I feel like I have the confidence and the courage to declare, boldly declare that we are on our journey to a thousand by the end of March. So I want you to come along this journey with me and help me achieve this goal by sharing this content with people in your circle. Let's make this circle bigger and um, make sure that, you know, this content reaches as many people as possible, especially if you find this content valuable and you know that it can help someone else. All right, let's begin with the things that I will not be paying for or buying in 2024. And number one on the list is a weekly chai latte. You guys, I am the queen of chai lattes. I am a chai latte hun. I believe in the gospel of chai lattes. I love how they taste. I love looking at them. I just feel like it's a work of art. It's the beverage of my dream. I absolutely love it and I absolutely enjoy it. And I have been, you know, putting my hard earned cash, you know, towards it every other Friday. Well, actually, every, yeah, every other Friday, if I can put it that way. And I have decided to reduce, you know, my spend when it comes to chai lattes. I am not completely doing away with it, but I'm just reducing my spend. But also, the other thing that I also picked up is that every time I have a chai latte, right, I always pair it up with something that has been baked like a cake a cupcake a biscuit something something nice that has been baked which is my weakness i always will pair it up with 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 a chai latte and a massive mug of hot water with lemon right just to balance things out and really yeah no it's it's yeah no it's an expensive exercise guys it's an expensive exercise and i was just doing the maths um so a chai latte costs me four pound fifty and something that's baked will usually cost me about five pound fifty right and that's sitting at like a good ten pounds every 
every week like every single friday right and if we were to just annualize this and i think i like the annualizing exercise because it just gives you a perspective of actually how much you are spending on these things and actually how much you can actually contribute to you know starting your savings or your investment journey or starting to smash that debt right and if i was to think about you know how much i was spending every single week right for 52 weeks actually no let's not work with 52 two weeks let's work with because it's not true that i have been going every single friday maybe let's work with about 40 weeks right that's sitting at 400 pounds what can i do with 400 pounds a lot of things i can actually go on holiday on 400 pounds so again this is just the perspective something for you to think about when it comes to the things that you are consuming on a daily or on a weekly basis takeouts or takeaways as they call them this side and for us this has been you know a a ritual every single friday we all sort of in our heads sort of you know set our mindset to say this is time for us to put our feet up watch a movie and just wait for mr delivery or uber eats to come through with whatever it is that we have ordered and two years back we decided to go on a cast cutting cut uh -uh, cost cutting exercise wow cost cutting exercise right and we learned that we were spending on average about 40 pounds a night like every single friday that we actually bought takeouts we're spending about 40 pounds guys on eating out for for two because i mean it's just the two of us i wouldn't count my son um i wouldn't count our son in that in in, in that budget right and if we do the maths again right and i want you to do this i actually want to empower you to start doing the maths and just seeing how much you are actually you know spending on these things you know without even thinking about it or realizing how much is going towards just you know um paying for convenience right and for us, it was again 40, 40 pounds, right? And if we were to multiply that by 40 weeks, just to be reasonable and to be, yeah, just to, just to be reasonable with the number of weeks, that's sitting at around 1,600 pounds a year. 1,600 pounds is the equivalent here of, you know, rent as well as um, an installment for a car, literally. Kids stuff. Guys, I'm going to start off with diapers and then I'm going to end off with clothes diapers guys and i don't know who taught me this perhaps it's also a an exposure thing or a lack of exposure thing so in south africa i think we only have well at the time i think we only had two options right we only bought you know the premium um diaper brands your pampers and your huggies right that's sort of all i actually knew then right and that's the mindset that i came with you know in the uk and one day i think about a year ago there was a sale happening at um at boots where they were actually um promoting the pampas brand which is what i've always bought um the pampas brand and it was about 11 pounds for two right it's usually 11 pounds for one and this time it was 11 pounds for two and for me it just felt like a bargain so i quickly um hashed it or shared it on my whatsapp story and most of the mamas in the uk were like excuse me ma'am why are you even paying 11 pounds for for, for diapers diapers are three pounds go to every grocery store in this country and they will have you know good quality diapers that you can use for your child and immediately when i heard that i was just like mm, what about rash you know is it is it good for my child and then eventually you know what i was like you know what let me try this and you know what i have tried them i am not looking back i pay three pounds versus 11 pounds for diapers now i i i have repented mamas i have repented and i am happy that i actually shared that post i would not have known i would have never known that there is actually an alternative because when i go shopping i don't i don't look for i did not look for any other brand but the pampas brand or the huggies brand nothing against them i absolutely love them but at this point in time we are cutting costs so the other thing that i will not be buying is kiddies clothes or children's clothes at full price guys children outgrow their clothes 
so quickly like it's not even funny also they make them so dirty so quickly you know so i've just decided you know what i'm just going to go into the stores especially when the sale starts at about 70 percent into 80 percent that's when i do my shopping and this is where i actually go in and you know buy as much as i can at a reduced cost and that is what we have for the season and even if it tears it's fine i'll just throw it away single stocks or shares i am now an etf honey when i started my investment journey i was that girl who was like a financial analyst credit analyst like i was in the analysis trying to determine which stock to buy should i buy google should i buy standard bank you know all of that wonderful time actually i feel like it's actually um, was a waste of my time to a certain extent and it was an expensive exercise but now i buy etfs and if you have never heard of what etfs is and what they do and how they can help you there is a video that i have done very comprehensive it explains exactly what it is so in simple terms or in summary an etf is basically buying a basket of shares instead of you know you manually having to <clears throat> do the, the the homework or the research of you know investing in individual um, stocks right so you buy this basket of shares and you then decide how much you can contribute towards you know a fraction of the ownership of the shares that are in this basket right and again guys this is the most cost effective way of investing in shares or participating in ownership in these wonderful companies that we all want you know a stake in you know the likes of your apples and your googles and the list goes on and on expensive decor furniture just home wear items in j guys like we are raising you know a wonderful bundle of joy who is full of life and full of adventure and his favorite thing at this point in time is kicking the ball everywhere and throwing it everywhere and i've just come to you know you know i've just come to peace with the fact that you know what i don't want him to you know um, what what is it kick the ball into an item that I feel like you know what I treasure with all of my heart and I've paid you know a lot of money and I get upset because it's just going to happen every day it's just going to happen probably every split second because that is his current obsession he's going to move to another obsession which I know is just going to trash my house so I've just come to the point where I'm like I'm not investing in anything expensive and I actually got advice from one of the mamas at church in the in the in the mommy room she was she has about four kids and she was just like mama just concentrate and focus on making sure that your home is a livable space right and it is conducive for your child to explore and you know to grow right and i feel like because i grew up in a home with girls and i i don't think i actually experienced this level of just being messy and active or actually overactive and but now i'm needing to renew my mind and also renew the way i spend money when it comes to you know homeware and stuff like that and the other day this actually upset me so much and i realized that actually i am stopping i am stopping this thing of investing a lot of my hard earned cash into these things i found like a blob of ink on our sheets and on our duvet guys like i feel like egyptian cotton a thousand thread count type of stuff like no like it really broke my heart uh, but now i am sober and i am clear that no we're not we're not going to town we're just going to you know we're just going to do the basics right we're just going to make sure that we have or live in a livable um, and comfortable and safe environment number five guys my mom installed wi-fi in her home what a breakthrough gasana absolutely love it for the girl and i think it has saved her a lot and i mean a lot of data and airtime costs from vodacom i remember actually asking her for her bank statement i wanted to do something or i needed to do something and i just saw so many running transactions like recurring transactions on a daily basis where she's just pumping or, or where she's just buying you know so much airtime and so much data because again she has daughters that she catches up with and checks in with or yeah checks in with on a daily basis right so for her this is you know a recurring expenditure this is a necessary expenditure and i'm happy and i'm glad that we were able to eventually or finally get to a place where we are actually buying or rather investing in wi-fi although it was the initial investment was quite costly but right now you know it's it's paying out it's paying 
um, up so well and there is no need for her to always be, you know, um, loading and loading and loading so that she can communicate. So something to also think about when it comes to cutting some of the costs that you may be incurring. High heeled shoes and fancy, like fancy shoes or fancy slops, fancy sandals, all of that stuff. I don't buy as much as I used to because again, life has changed. I now live in a completely different part of the world where walking is a necessity, where walking is the thing that we do. Guys, we walk everywhere. We walk everywhere. So instead of inv investing in like nice sandals and slops and brogues, I absolutely used to love brogues for work. I don't buy any of those things. I invest in good trainers and good techies because that's what I use on a daily basis to get around. Updated versions of gadgets, AirPods, iPhone, MacBook, all of those wonderful things that I want and I need at this point in time because I feel like the useful life has come to an end. I have not upgraded because, you know, I got a notification from my from my contract that actually, you know, the contract has come to an end. Do you want to 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 do you want to get a new a, a new a new gadget? My rule of thumb now, or my rule of thumb has always been if it's still working and it's still functioning the way it's supposed to function, I'm going to continue using it until it it is like semi dead, like what most of my devices are at this point in time and i think it's a great mindset it's a great mindset to have especially when you're someone like me who's not really like tech heavy and i don't i don't even think i use my iphone to its optimum capacity right so if you're someone like that really guys there is there is no use you know you know buying the most updated thing for the sake of you know for the sake of looking the part when you could actually be you know saving that money and redirecting it to some of your other important goals um and um yeah bank charges guys fyi very important to note you can call the bank or you can call your banker guys and ask them to downgrade your bank charges or downgrade the plan that the banking plan that you are on especially if or especially when you read you know the benefits that come with the plan that you are already on where you are paying so much money you can actually see that i actually do not use you know most if not 80 percent of the things that are here right so guys let us not obsess let us not obsess over you know how pretty or how glossy the the the, the card looks or how dark you know the card looks let's obsess over being efficient, being cost if as cost efficient as possible, right? The thing that I also want to flag out or um, actually let you guys know of, especially um, my Investec girlies that are overseas and still have an Investec account in South Africa, guys, you can actually call your banker. Thank me, ne? thank me when you do this. You can call your banker and actually downgrade your account to an online only account because I am imagining that when you are here, you're not going to be using your card, you're not going to be transacting, you're probably just doing debit orders. Like for me, I only have like three debit orders, um, just as an example, that goes that goes off on, on that um on that account. So just to ensure that you know all of that all of your activities, your financial activities are still happening in South Africa, just ask them to downgrade you to an online account. And when you are in the country, um, you can um, reactivate it and, and you know, start, you know, transacting using your card. But there is no reason for you to be, to be using, you know, there is no reason for you to be paying, you know, the, the normal, the normal um, bank charges for someone who has both online and offline um, benefits to, 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 to the bank, to the bank, right? Number nine, less Ubers and more walking. And I feel like I have, you know what? I have spoken about this so many times. Let's move on to number 10. And number 10 is insurance policies guys i think most of us duplicate effort or duplicate yeah we duplicate effort especially when it comes to um when it comes to insurance right so if you are employed guys chances are 
you already have as part of your employee benefits, right? Insurance policies for yourself and um, that actually also would cater for, you know, your family members. So I would suggest that you actually do an audit and review um, all the insurance policies that you have under your group benefits. So your life cover, funeral covers that um, that will cover yourself and even, you know, your family members. Understand what that looks like before you even go out into the market and have, you know, an additional life cover just as an example or another five or six funeral policies just as an example so do that but the other thing that i want you to do is to also do comparatives right especially for those that are self-employed i did this this comparative um when i was when i had now moved to the uk so i had a life policy or yeah a life policy with discovery right and i was paying about 1.5 or 1.8 something ridiculous like that for my life cover and then i did a comparative right with life check because they're actually able to give you comparatives um, with um, with different um, insurers, right? I did a comparative. We actually even updated my cover amount. So if, for instance, my cover amount when I was still with Discovery was a million, now it was sitting at maybe, let's say, 2.5 million because I'm now married and I now have a child, right? So my financial responsibility and, and uh, have now increased and I have a dependent, right? And, you know, I got a quote from Old Mutual for about 800, 800 rand by just doing that exercise of just checking my comparatives and checking where I will actually get the best deal for the same person with the same risk profile with a higher cover amount. So do that exercise for yourself and just make sure that you're not paying for things that you are not supposed to be paying for. Okay holidays in the uk and i think the reason we did a lot of holidays in the uk was because of covid19 we're in lockdown and we couldn't travel the way we wanted so we did the likes of your scotland so your edinburgh's the south of england so your cornwalls your st ives and then different cities in wales etc but guys so expensive like extremely expensive and i just also feel like i the quality of you know accommodation and food no guys no it's 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 not at the level at which i i i i sort of like you know give a round of applause to especially because in this country i am at a place where i actually cannot afford you know the real five star you know type of you know um, um, a holiday. So what we prefer to do now and what we are clear about is that we are going to go on holidays in countries where the pound can actually stretch. So one of our favorite holiday destinations, guys, believe it or not, drum roll, South Africa. This is the place where, guys, we can afford to be on holiday for a month move from one city to the next, eat whatever we want under the sun, like sleep in hotels, like, you know, the likes, like go the whole nine yards and really enjoy ourselves without thinking, oh my goodness, how much are we spending? Oh my goodness, how much, we, uh, how much are we spending? So that's just, yeah, some of the reflections that we have done and we've decided that mm -mm, we are not going to um, holiday in the UK because of that reason. And I actually remember when we were still, um, when I was still single and we would go on holidays with our friends, right? We always say the holiday we are going to guys, is the holiday where we are, we are able to divide by, where we are dividing the rand, right? Instead of having to multiply. And those are the holidays we actually really, really enjoyed because no one was stressing about money. Everyone was just focused on, you know, making sure that we are succeeding in terms of duration. So we'd like book like seven, nights or eight nights away and eat whatever we wanted and you know do as many excursions as as we could without without having to stress about money right and those were destinations like your thailands and your balis which to this day those are probably still you know my favorite holidays that i have been to i was actually even telling my husband that i'm happy to go back to those places any day because i really rest i'm not thinking about money and when i'm on holiday i don't want to be thinking about money i want to be resting i want to be relaxing contact lenses here so i moved from glasses to contact lenses because at some point my son and i, I guess maybe i was also a bit <laughs> a bit immature in this whole being a mom my son just broke my glasses and i just felt like okay at this point this is not going to be sustainable so i moved to, from glasses to wearing contact lenses and yeah no it was a year where really i spent a lot of money really really spent a lot of money and in actual fact i could have used that money 
to buy a better or a good quality frame or even two frames and just continue and just continue wearing wearing my glasses right now my son is not in that season of wanting to break my glasses so that no longer that no longer is a, is a thing but i do appreciate and love wearing contact lenses especially on occasions and stuff where i don't want to be wearing you know frames like this and so what i've decided is um to buy the dailies the ones where you just put on and throw away you're not saving them for 30 days and all of that stuff so i've bought those um those uh, dailies 30 of those dailies and that's what i'm going to use on occasion cons i'm continuously going to use um these frames and actually someone was saying that actually tendo you could actually do surgery and correct you know the pupil I'm a bit nervous about that. If you've done that, please let me know in the comment section. Um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit scared. I feel like I still need to do a little bit of research just to, um, just to help you know my head settle around surgery and eyes. But yeah, that's just one of the other things that I have decided to do in terms of cutting costs. And guys, if this is your kind of content, please do remember. To subscribe and also let me know in the comment section the things that you have cut out or the things that you feel like you know what these are things that i need to start cutting out so that i can start or continue my journey of saving investing and smashing that debt see you next time